I'm wheelie into these new hub motors from ebikes.ca, aka Grintech, and I think you will be too once you see their really cool features. Do you have a penchant for things with wheels? Maybe you have a penchant for things with motors. Or if you're like me, you love both and you like wheel motors. I'm John Holmes and I have a wheelie big problem with wheel motors. If you are a regular to the channel, you probably realize that I like things that have wheels and I like things that have motors, specifically electric motors, although I do like my two strokes. And this has manifested itself in a few different ways. I have a lot of rock crawlers. I think I'm up to 50 rock crawlers right now. And I have a few electric bikes. But today, what I'm going to talk about is a relatively new hub motor that came out on the market from Grintech aka ebikes.ca if you would like to go to their website. And this is the all axle motor. This particular one that I have in my hand, I built for a customer for a mobility trike. And so it is a specialized version that is built for a one-sided mount on a tricycle, but they do make them for pretty much any other bike around. And the reason why I would like to talk about this is twofold. Number one, I believe this is the raddest hub motor on the market by far. In a lot of different ways, they did a lot of engineering work in-house at ebikes.ca, at Grintech. They assemble these in-house in Canada at ebikes.ca, at Grintech, whichever you want to call them. And they really did a lot of work to make these an extremely reliable hub motor. Now, why would you want to choose one? Well, I can tell you first off why you may not want to choose one and that is the cost. It comes at a premium and these are around 700, 750 US dollars to get them. And compared to a normal, just Chinese built hub motor, we're talking, you know, a couple hundred dollars, maybe even up to $400 premium, depending on what you're looking for. But moving back to why you would want to select one. Well, there's really a lot of reasons. The biggest for me is that this is a lightweight hub motor. And the easiest way to tell you why this is lightweight is to look on the inside. And I actually helped them machine the prototype parts for this hub motor, so I have a lot of parts here. Now, let's just take a look at the stator on this one. This is the Grintech all axle. And as you can see, the support for the stator, it's made of aluminum and it's very lightweight and there's really not a lot to it. And on top of that, this is their inner axle that has a 20 millimeter through hole on it. And as you can tell, there's a lot of material taken out of the inside as well to make it really lightweight. These are machined out of 7075 T6 aluminum for rigidity and also for resistance against any sort of bumps or abrasions or any long-term deforming that may happen on a build like this. Now, this is your standard nine continent motor. And not only does it have really heavy housing on the outside, it has way too much back iron for what the magnets need, but it has this extremely heavy stamped steel stator support. And on top of that, it has a heavy steel machined axle that goes through it. And what they managed to do is essentially have the exact same active motor materials, the same stator, the same magnets as this nine continent, but they drop two whole kilograms from the motor. So the all axle is about four kilograms, whereas the nine continent is gonna be six kilograms for the exact same motor, for the exact same power, everything. Now, the one downside to removing all the weight is that you may not have as much thermal mass. So climbing a really, really, really big hill, you may find yourself overheating a little bit faster on the all axle as opposed to the nine continent. But to tell you the truth, I don't even know if there's gonna be any hills big enough unless you're intentionally going up a mountain trying to smoke a motor. Now, on the upside of this, um, these have temperature probes on the inside. Uh, essentially, it will tell your controller when it starts to overheat and it can roll back your amperage if your controller is small, uh, smart enough. Now, uh, Grintech does have their phase runner, ESCs, uh, controllers, whatever you want to call them for the e-bike realm, and they are smart enough to roll back when we do see an overheating event. But all in all, it is a, an extremely cool motor, and really the coolest thing about it, 
that I haven't even gotten to yet is the way that it transmits torque. So the big downfall, the, the, the huge downfall of a hub motor is that they typically will transfer all of their torque through this axle. If you imagine it's in your fork like this, it's giving us rotational power this way, so your axle, somehow your motor has to push back to transmit the torque equal and in an equal and opposite force. So it's trying to twist in your dropouts. And the only thing that is holding it in is the tension of your bolts and also these flats. This is how you transmit torque on a normal hub motor. And if you look, it's extremely tiny. There's really not a whole lot of space to have a torque arm here. And they will tend to you know, uh, either damage your frame, damage your torque arm over time, especially if you have regen because it'll go and then the region will hit and then it'll go and the region will hit and it just rocks the nuts loose. It, it rocks uh, damage into your torque arms. And in generally, it is an extremely, extremely poor design that somehow is still in the market. I, I don't even know why manufacturers keep doing it other than it is cheap and the average Chinese manufacturer is extremely hesitant to ever change anything once they have the engineering already done. Uh, when you try to tighten down your axle nuts enough so that you don't have that rocking issue, you can strip these threads out. That's exactly what happened on this guy right here, is that uh, we stripped some threads out because of the extremely poor way that it is held. Have you ever stripped out the threads on your hub motor? Now, the all axle design, and this is an updated one, it uses this for our reactive torque. So it transmits the torque to a torque arm. And in this case, we are looking at their tricycle torque arm, single-sided mount. This keys in, as you can see, it has been machined on the inside. This keys in to the interior axle on there. So all of your torque goes through here. The wheel spins, this axle does not. And this actually bolts in. I don't have the bolts in right now because it is still needing to be built into the bike. But needless to say, this is a much wider area to transmit your torque. You have multiple bolts on there and not just, you know, uh, something slip fit, basically. This transmits torque directly to the frame, region, power, region, power. You can do that for probably a couple of years without even needing to retighten them. Have you ever spun your hub motor out, even with a torque arm? Grintech has actually done tests on this where they made a test stand and they went from region to power to region to power back and forth and back and forth and tested how long it takes for a normal axle to come loose and how long it takes for their, their new axle to come loose. Um, I forget what it was, but it was on the order of, you know, this needing to be tightened basically every month or two equivalent uh, and this needing to be tightened every couple of years, maybe. Uh, so really cool. They do a lot of test bed uh, sort of stuff, a lot of scientific testing on their products. And I really like that kind of stuff. One reason why I do like Grintech is all their scientific data. Do you have a torque arm on your builds or do you just go with the tight nut method? But let's get back to the last and probably the most important feature for most people on these all axle hubs is that it is compatible with every sort of mounting configuration that you could possibly have. 20 millimeter, so that's QR20. They have adapters for your 15 millimeter through axles that bolt in. They have adapters for your regular quick release axles that slip into here. They have adapters for your old school nine millimeter thread on style that bolt in. And essentially this is, as they say, a true all axle design, which is by far my favorite feature. Although the lightweight's pretty trick in my opinion, it is by far my favorite feature of this. And I got one for myself that I'll be lacing up soon. And I am putting it on a dual suspension, double crown, QR20 compatible front fork, a boxer in particular, and I'm not sure what frame I'm going to put it on, but essentially it's going to be a downhill bike with the nice QR20 front fork and I can throw a hub motor in there. First time in the industry that I'm aware of that you can do that and I'll never have to worry about it coming loose. I have spun out so many axles over the years. I have destroyed so many hub motors by giving them too many amps and having these strip out or having our torque arm strip out. I uh, just had a customer build the other day where I was testing it out. And, you know, I'm glad it happened to me, but it 
it slipped on traction, spun up because I had a little bit too many amps on it. And then when it caught traction, it just rolled right out of the fork. And it was a steel fork. It was a perfect fork for the build, yet the torque was just too much. And you know, there's so much leverage on this small amount of flat space that it just rolled it right out of the fork, opened the forks right up. Fortunately, being steel, we were able to bend them back and we're gonna have to use a torque armor in there. And the torque armor is gonna have to bolt into the uh, or the fender mounts on her front fork. It, it's just, it's just kind of a chintzy setup long term. It's not something that I feel comfortable, you know, having on a bike for five years without checking it. Basically, every month for tightness. Now, the torque arms do help. They are pretty resilient long term. We've had, you know, ten years with this e-bike industry, and there's not been a whole lot of issues. But it's always great to see a company that does it better and does it way better than everybody else. They didn't just change the axle on here. They changed everything about the motor except for the magnetics, which are known. And once you have good magnetics, you can pretty much design a housing around that any way that you please. And it works out usually to the advantage, which while I'm talking about the housing on here, you will notice if you're into wheel building that they used a paired spoke instead of having equally spaced uh, spoke holes in there, which, you know, we would have one here, one here, and, and one right there. They did a paired spoke so that when you have shorter spokes like this, you can actually get away with a zero cross or radial lace. But if you look really closely, it is not radial lace. It actually goes into the rim at about an 80 degree angle, which is perfect in my opinion. Uh, we could have done a one cross on this, but it was about a 75 degree angle, which in my opinion is too much for a typical nipple going into a standard mountain bike rim. So all in all, just nothing but great things to say about it. I was extremely happy to be able to machine all of their prototype all axle axles for the interior. And it's also given me a chance to have the pieces laying around to really understand what is going on with these motors and to know these things are just badass. So if you're looking for a new hub motor and you have the ability to afford one of these, this is by far the best hub motor on the market. And I can highly, highly, highly recommend it to you with no reservations. I got one for myself. I'm getting one for this customer's build and we're just going to have some fun with it. And that's that's what we really want to do every day, right? Is have some fun. So let me know if you have any e-bikes and if there are things in particular that you find more fun than others, let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for tuning in and have a good day. What kind of hub motor do you have on your e-bike and what voltage are you running on? Have you tried out one of the new all axle hubs from ebikes.ca, AKA Grintech?